Welcome to Outdoor Adventures with Jason. Each week, I bring the world of hunting, fishing, and conservation to you. From the great hunting and fishing opportunities found in the Americas to the dream safaris located on the dark continent beyond, I'll introduce you to those who are already out in the field living every outdoor enthusiast's dream, as well as outfitters and gear manufacturers that can make those dreams your reality. Welcome to this week's episode of Outdoor Adventures with Jason. Man, this is going to be a great episode. I'm really excited. I've got one of the hardest working men in the outdoor industry on the show today. I've got Mark Peterson, our host of the Cabela's Instinct Expedition Series, which is on the Sportsman Channel and owner of Worldwide Trophy Adventures. Uh, Mark, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing today? Great. I really appreciate your time. Uh, So I'd like to start off with Worldwide Trophy Adventures, if you wouldn't mind. Let's tell the folks a little bit about that, what you guys can do, and that awesome tag service that you provide. Yeah. Yeah, let me give you a quick 101 on on the services that we offer. Worldwide Trophy Adventures actually would have been a year and a half ago acquired Cabela's Outdoor Adventures, Cabela's Tags, and Cabela's Travel Services. So we, we were fortunate enough to be able to roll their services into our current offering. Our main office is in Sydney, right across from Cabela's. We have a great working relationship with Cabela's, so we still still do a lot of partnerships there. A lot of benefits, such as using the club card and so forth, go hand-in-hand. Hand. Now, sort of break apart our services. They kind of go into different categories. So our outdoor adventure division is a hunt booking agency, basically. Uh, we'll book North America, international, basically all over the world. If you're looking for a blue sheep in Pakistan, we'll hook you up with the best guy over there, up to somebody that's looking for an antelope hunt in Colorado. Colorado. We cover anything and anywhere in between. Um, the beauty about using our services is one, there's no upcharge for using our services. If, if you book direct with an outfitter or you book with us, it's the same cost no matter what. And so that, that part's kind of a misconception between a lot of, a lot of people in the industry. Of, well, if I use a booking agency, I've got a, I've got an upcharge to use their service. And that's, that's just not true. A big one if somebody's looking, I'll use a good example. This is how I break it apart for a lot of people. So if somebody's looking to go on an elk hunt and they have X budget in mind, anytime that they go up to an individual outfitter, that outfitter is always giving them the sales pitch of why that client should come and hunt with me as an outfitter. This is the reason why. So when somebody comes to WTA and they say, well, this is this is what I'd really like to do. This is the budget that I have. I'd, I'd really like this kind of hunt. When you come to us, we have an offering of over 600 outfitters that we work with over, and I'm using elk as an example. We work with over 50 different elk outfitters. So when you come to us, we can truly match what the best outfitter is for your needs versus that client going to every outfitter who's always selling themselves as the best and, and would be the best choice. We can kind of help that client really choose okay, I don't think these 10 outfitters are going to be best for physical ability. Um, these guys are over your budget. Let's really focus in on, on this one and, and truly line that client up with the best experience that we think would fit for that person. So that's kind of the outdoor adventure segment part of it. I can say there's not a corner of the world that we don't have an outfitter that we work with. So no matter what a client's looking for, if it's not only North America, but all over Africa, Asia, Europe, and where you're looking to go. Realistically, if I come to you with a, a budget of X and I'm looking for a certain animal and, and my budget's realistic, let's say, you're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna most likely have somebody you can hook me up with. Correct. And sometimes and we'll be perfectly honest, because there'll be somebody that comes that doesn't have an idea and it may be their first elk hunt and they're like, Man, I really wanna shoot just a a, a representative bull, a, a good five by five or a six by six and they're like, Man, I've got nine thousand dollars where where's the best spot to go we're going to look at that client and say well you've got two options really if nine thousand is your budget we can look at getting you better than an average type bull or if you're really looking for an average type bull let's work your budget down to get you exactly what you're looking for and then you can save a little bit of money too what we like to say is we consult the client to truly find out what exactly they're looking for and a lot of clients come in and they know they want to go on an elk hunt they know they've got x amount set aside and that's kind of it they're not sure, well, do I want to go on a backpack type elk hunt? Do I want to go on a horse elk hunt? Do I want to go on a ranch style elk hunt? Do I want to go during the rut? Well, there are a lot of these questions that we kind of help that client sort through and, and specifically target what trip they really want to go on. I guess now out of my curiosity, what is the most exotic hunt that you guys will set people up with? Oh, that's a tough one. So we book, if I look at exotic, um, I mean, we do all the, all the Africa stuff. So we book leopards, lions, any of the big five, big seven you're looking for. 
probably the most exotic are some of the sheep hunts in Asia just because there's so few tags. So if I look at the Markors in Pakistan, there are only 12 total Markor tags in Pakistan for hunting season 2017. We have access to all 12 of those. So if I look at, we'll, we'll book people in there for a cash for Markor or a Suleiman Markor. But even more exclusive than that, if I look at blue sheep in Pakistan, there are eight total tags for blue sheep in Pakistan with our Horses in Pakistan this year, we we sold five of the eight tags over there. Wow. So that's that's exclusive hunts that, that we can narrow down to depending on what type of hunt the person wants to do. So I, when I say anywhere in between, I want to say we're the largest booking agency for elk hunts in North America. And we're also one of the most exclusive to when you look at going overseas to what you want to do in, in Asia for those guys looking for really exclusive like i want to do the the blue sheep in nepal i want to do the blue sheep in pakistan and so forth so the people that want to try and go get all the ibex of the world we we kind of help those people along the way also it ties in really well because one we can help that person plan so there are a couple different clients one it's that person that's looking for they're going to go on one or two hunts a year we really help that person maximize the dollar that they spend limit the risk Versus like if they go to a show and just book with an outfitter that they've only seen for 15 minutes because they had a show special. That scares me a lot of times when clients do that because there's a better chance than not that they're not going to have the experience that they want. By going to us, we can help help that client. But on the on the larger clients that may go on five or six trips a year, we help them plan out. Our travel service handles all their travel arrangements, their flights. Um, we work hand in hand with the outfitters that they're booked with. So we know how we send the itinerary over to those outfitters. They know exactly when they're going to arrive. If there are changes in flights that need to be made because of weather and so forth, we handle that all for them so they don't need to have to worry about trying to contact any of the airlines to do any of that. So we, we try to make it as pain-free as possible for our clients. Well, very neat. And so I'm going to tie in another service here. So I'm that guy coming to you, and I say I've got $9,000 for a, a elk hunt, I really want to try to find a good representation, and I want to put in for New Mexico, uh, Arizona, Utah, and and Wyoming. Let's say. Yep. Your tag service. How does that benefit me if I if I want to do that? Correct. So what I tell everybody, there are lots of tag application service out there. Um, WTA is now the only full service tag application service. And what I mean by that is we actually float our clients tag fees in the states that it requires. So I'm going to use Colorado as an example. If you're looking to apply for bighorn sheep, a mountain goat, a shiris moose, elk, mule deer, antelope, any of the species in the state of Colorado, when you put in your application, you have to front the tag fee cost. Um, an example of the bighorn sheep, mountain goat, and chiris moose are around $1,800 to float that tag fee. Now, that's not saying that you're guaranteed to get that tag. Actually, chances are that you're not going to get that tag. What the state of Colorado does is they take all these fees in, and they draw money off the interest by holding this for the draw. So they get three to four months of these millions of dollars coming in from their state fees, and that's they use that towards their division of wildlife, which is good for them, but it, it hurts people that want to apply. So what we've at WTA done is set up a model that we float tag application fees in the state. So instead of a person coming and saying, man, I'm going to have to go to my wife and let her know that I'm going to float out, be almost $5,000 in the state of Colorado for four months. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people don't want to have that conversation with their significant other, where we just go and we charge you a one-time small fee up front to float that for you. It allows people to, instead of really having to choose what applications they want to put in for, it allows them to apply for more states and more species and increases their chance of drawing. So we have a lot of people that will say, I just want to apply for elk. I want to apply for elk in every state that you have. Well, that allows our consultants to say, okay, now let's lay out that plan for you. Because we know there's certain zones that you can draw in in two years or three years, and there's some trophy zones that you're going to want to wait like eight or nine years for. So let's say we're going to hold Utah. We're going to apply you to a unit in, in Utah that usually takes seven or eight points, but it's shooting 330 to 350 class bulls. So we're going to know that you're going to draw that tag somewhere between 2023 and 2025. Let's set up your other states to try to draw you tags every year or every other year before that until you get in that good unit. And that's, that's again, with our consultants working with our tag application clients to say, what are your goals by using tag? And a lot of it is, man, I'd really like to draw an elk tag every year. Okay, well, let's set up a portfolio that allows you to do that. Some years you may draw a tag that is in a one to two point area, and you're going to be hunting bulls in 
that a little lower quality, but you're going to be hunting. But knowing that in Utah, you've got that point going because you're really going to draw that good unit seven years out. And then New Mexico is a state that doesn't have points. So every year in New Mexico, you have a chance of drawing a great tag, which is which is nice. If you don't have a little all the years to put in for the points, New Mexico turns out to be a great spot to give even the odds, so to speak. Correct. Correct. So every year... Where in Colorado it's tough because it's it's a weighted point system. Like I can tell you there's certain units you'll apply to and and you won't draw it. But you can go to New Mexico and every year everybody has the same chance. So that's one that for all the species you want to apply to just because you have the same chance as the person standing next to you in line even though they've been applying for five years. Very cool. Yep. It's I, I can certainly understand the points and why the states do it, but it's also nice to know that I can just go and be put into a pure draw, and I've got just as good a luck as anybody else. Yeah, and what we've noticed is there's kind of that distinct line. If you if you take the U.S. and draw it in half, the Western U.S. is is used to how the tag application process happens. In the Eastern U.S., where the majority of hunting numbers are, they don't understand how the draws in the West work. Like I'm going to use this where I'm from, Michigan. In Michigan, I can go to a number of places and and buy a hunting license to go and hunt whitetail, and I get two deer tags, two buck tags, and usually a doe tag. I can go and and I have to apply for a turkey tag, but in the unit I'm in, it's 100%. So I can usually go and over-the-counter buy any of the tags that I have. And when people of the East look to go to the West, they're like, man, it's just so complicated. I don't don't really know what to do, so now I'm just going to book with an outfitter. Man, all of a sudden my booking with an outfitter is expensive. So we kind of help people. So we have clients that want to draw a tag in a limited area and then go with the best outfitter in that area, which lowers that hunt cost down because then that outfitter doesn't have to have a landowner tag. And then we also have clients that have full portfolios that apply for mule deer, antelope, everything. They want to draw and they want to go and hunt by themselves. So I drew a mule deer tag here. I'm going to take the nine days off from work. I'm going to head out there and now that I've got the tag, I'm just going to go by myself. So we, we kind of handle every spectrum of person that through our tag application, ones that want to do it themselves, ones that want to book with an outfitter. It allows the person to really not have to study all the regulations and which, I mean, they obviously need to know hunting regulations, but knowing yeah. all the the draw odds for any particular area, you guys are really taking that off the table and doing it for them. Correct. And, the, and it's, is, it's kind of debated which which draw odds are correct. I mean, there are like six or seven services out there that all claim they have the most accurate draw odds, but they all have something down in parentheses at the bottom that says these draw odds may be off 10 to 15 percent. And some of those you're like, man, yeah, that's that's a varying degree. We have, I mean, we apply thousands of people into these units every year, and we can tell from our personal experiences what units are drawing, which ones aren't, just because we have so many people that apply into those units. Oh, that's always good intel to have. Yeah. So Worldwide Trophy Adventures is really in- encompassing the outdoor adventures, tags, the travel service. You guys can really set up and cater to both the person that wants their hand held for the whole trip and the do-it-yourselfer who wants just to tag and is going to hop in the truck and take off. Correct. The last business unit that we added on Worldwide Trophy Adventures last year was the landowner tag division. So we now also control a large number of landowner tags in a lot of the Western states. And those are, in general, for guys that are looking to have a secure tag and a good unit, but they're not going to hire an outfitter. So those guys can, can come to us. They can purchase their landowner tag. They can go on that hunt by themselves. Or there's some guys that know what unit they want to hunt. They didn't draw that tag this year. They have the outfitter they like to go with. They can buy that tag from us and then partner with that outfitter to use that tag in that unit as well. So our, our main goal at WTA is to offer anything that somebody in the outdoor industry would need for hunting or fishing. Our goal is to offer that service to them. Oh, okay. Well, kind of be that one-stop shop in the industry. Yeah, to cover the whole the whole gamut of it. Yeah. And now, kind of switching gears a little bit. Not only do you are you working behind the scenes with Worldwide Trophy Adventures to get others outside, but you're also hosting Cabela's Instinct. Uh, tell us a little bit about that series uh, on the Sportsman Channel. Correct. So that series airs at 7.30 on Tuesday nights, the primary airing for that one. And Cabela's Instinct, it basically encompasses about 50 to 60% North America hunts and then that 40 to 50% international hunts. So we kind of give a good mix what it's like. And we kind of use 
instinct as what is the basic instinct of a hunter. So you follow around and we try not to make it that traditional hunting show that's been on air forever to where you follow the host and the host is always turning and talking into the camera and they end up talking into the camera for 18 minutes of the episode. We're more, we kind of look at it from a big picture and do the, the, the big shots in the field and show you when we're in Pakistan and this is what the true picture of the culture is and try to encompass that in, into the episode. While that, and we try to highlight the services that Worldwide Trophy Adventures do. I mean, they handle all my booking, all my travel arrangements, my visas. They handle everything for everywhere I travel, my, myself and my cameraman. So a lot of what you see on TV is what a lot of our clients get as our services just as a normal day to day. Now, how many seasons have you had uh, instinct on? So last year, it was before it was actually named Destination Extreme, and we rebranded it into Cabela's Instinct. Um, last year was the first season we've actually completed the filming of season two, which will come on Q3 this year. So uh, you yourself then have traveled the whole world hunting, correct? Correct. Yeah, I spend, uh, hopefully my wife doesn't hear this, she probably knows the number anyway, I spend anywhere between 150 to 170 days in the field a year primarily hunting, but anywhere from North America to Asia to Europe. I think I covered every continent that had hunting last year. I was on for some part of the year. Wow, that's amazing. And on top yeah. of the TV series, which is a full-time job, especially if you're spending six months of the year you know, out in the field, and Worldwide Trophy Adventures, if that's not enough, mm-hmm. you're also part owner in a couple of guide services, are you not? Correct. So I'm partnered with... Um, three different outfitting services and they're kind of kind of spread all over uh, one being goose haven outfitters which is a waterfall bear and whitetail outfitter in meadow lake saskatchewan i think we're the largest waterfall outfitter in saskatchewan we run roughly 200 clients a year um, we must be doing something right because we're going on our third year in a row for 100 percent rebook so i, I can honestly wow. say i don't have any spot open so everybody loves going up there. Then another one is Salt River Outfitters based out of Kentucky. So we offer whitetail and turkey hunts in Kentucky and then also Kansas. Um, third being Whitaker Brothers Hunting Company, which is based out of Colorado. Um, we offer hunts for all the species in Colorado. We also do hunts in New Mexico. Um, we're down in Old Mexico for desert sheep, mule deer, and coos deer. And we do some limited number of hunts in Nebraska as well. Wow. So really, not even counting the the Worldwide Trophy Adventures, any one of those outfitters is really going to cover a large portion of of the U.S. to get somebody just about anything they want. Correct. Yeah, I want to say of the North America 29 with my Outfitters Whitaker Brothers covering most of it, I think we're about halfway on the species that that my Outfitters cover. So when somebody's booking, now, again, they can come to you and, and cover from the East Coast all the way out to the West, but it really helps, I guess, the, the East Coast folks to understand how to get involved in and and work the the drawing systems using a service like yours to get out west to get whatever animal they're looking for. Correct. I think the majority of people that are in the east, they always they've grown up whitetail hunting. It's their passion. They always look at what would that next animal be if i if i could go out west and hunt and i think like 90 percent of them always say man i just wish sometime in my lifetime i could get out and go elk hunting but i just don't know how to get one of the tags it's so expensive it's something i can never do and anytime i could spend like 10 or 15 minutes with the person to try to explain well there are lots of ways you, you don't instantly have to go and book with an outfitter you can use a service and draw your own tag and go and do it yourself or buy a landowner tag and then all of a sudden it kind of clicks they're like man that's that's money that I could could do that hunt almost every year if I plan that. So it's just kind of educating those people, and the, the mindset in the East is just a lot different than it is in the West. Oh, interesting. Now, it's not necessarily as hard of a hunt, but have you put in in your home state of Michigan for the elk? Every year I put in for the elk tag. So I, I haven't been fortunate enough to draw that one yet, but my brother-in-law's dad drew it in the, er, in the mid-'90s. I was in uh, middle school, and he drew it and shot a good bull. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's it's amazing to get up around Atlanta to look at those animals. Yeah. So we, uh, I have uh, bird dogs, too, so we always head up close to Wolverine up there and, and go woodcock and grouse hunting, and we occasionally run into some of those elk up there, and it's, it's pretty cool seeing it in the state of Michigan. Oh, yeah. And so on top of all that, you also are partnered up with uh, Rusted Rooster Media, and you have Hatch Marketing. Uh, tell the listeners a little bit about what those are and, and what they could expect and, and use those guys for. Correct. So that our Rusted Rooster and 
um, production and hatch marketing is actually based out of Midland, Michigan, which is right across the state from where I'm at, about a two-hour drive. Chris and Casey Kiefer and Jason Brown are my partners in that. And Rusted Rooster is the production house for Project Dropped, um, Rival Wild, Sheep Shake, When Life, some of the other programming that's on TV, big shows. We also handle about 75 commercials a year, um, do a lot of short series as well. Uh, Buck Knives do a lot of short series, Winchester, Boone and Crockett. Um, we do a lot of that type of 40 minute thing they want to air on social media. We do a lot of that production work. We'd went and kind of over the years decided we want to own all the shows that we do just because we can add so much value to them. Hatch Marketing on the other side handles all the marketing plans, print ads, and so forth for a number of the companies in the outdoor industry. Oh, okay. So you're really covering the gamut there. Yeah. I mean, it's, if it's dealing with the outdoor industry, I want to say I have my hand in it in some form or some shape. Well, that's cool. Now, going back to your uh, your television experience, uh, tell me about one of the hunts that sticks out as most memorable for you. There are a couple that, that stick out. Probably, and I want to say I went on 14 different hunts last year, filming and checking out new outfitters and, and new leases and so forth. My youngest daughter is seven, and we got her out for her first deer hunt on uh, the opening day of rifle season down in Kentucky and and she was able to shoot a nice 10 point down there and I'd, I'd have to say that was one of the the most memorable and proudest I've ever been I think as as a father is watching her do that and I tried to explain to her that growing up in Michigan I, I think I was almost 20 before I shot a deer as big as she got when she was seven <laughs> um, but that that was probably one of my one of my favorite trips and I think it's probably going to be hard to beat that one as far as locations that I've traveled to I did a Send Ibex and Uriel hunt and Markor hunt in Pakistan last year in February. Not knowing what I was getting myself into going over there, there's I was pretty nervous heading to that location. Sure. And I have to say that probably my favorite international location to ever go and film and hunt was Pakistan. Great people all along the way. It wasn't what I expected. Um, I liked it so much. I'm taking off here in 10 days on March 5th to head back over there and and go blue sheep hunting and, and host that group of hunters from Worldwide Trophy Adventures that's going on. Oh, wow. So these are the five tags that you sold for the blue sheep? Yeah, I've got, I had to snag one of those bad boys myself. So y'all are going to be hunting together. Yes. And one of the other services that WTA does is we do a, a good majority of hosted hunts. And we kind of, we, we do it for a couple different reasons. We'll host anything from an elk camp to Africa for Cape Buffalo to I'm doing one for Marco Polo later this year or this blue sheep one. And how we look at, at doing that is what are some hunt locations or hunt species that, that a lot of people want to go after, but there's just something about it that they don't want to go unless they know somebody else that's going. A lot of people want to go after a blue sheep and and there you can either do it in Nepal or Pakistan, but they just don't want to go to Pakistan by themselves. They feel more comfortable if I'm there along with them. I've been in the country before. I know the guides that are actually going to be guiding me, that are going to be guiding everybody else there. I've met them. I've actually seen them in the field. I know what their capabilities are. Um, I know the person that's going to be arranging our travel in country. I know how our, our trophies are going to get shipped from Pakistan back to the States. I know the process for all that. And everybody just feels more comfortable on, on those ones. So when it works out and I go to one of those locations and I can put a package together to where – I can get these these five tags and, and put a group from WTA together, and it works to go over there and film at the same time. It's kind of a win-win for the TV show. It's a win for WTA. It's a win for our clients. Wow, very neat. That'll be an amazing episode to see because very few people even know yep. what a blue sheep is. Exactly. So looking as we go forward in the future, what's on the horizon for Cabela's Instinct? What are you looking to do and, and push the show to do? So the show is, we'll I'll continue the same mix. I, I, I don't want to alienate myself in doing majority international hunting when the majority of people that are watching the show are, are North America-based hunters. Cabela's is a North American-based company, and so is WTA. I, we support everything in North America. So it's, it's going on North America hunts that are a little bit different from what everybody else would do. It's going on an elk hunt, but instead of being a Rocky Mountain elk hunt in New Mexico or somewhere like that, it may be a Roosevelt hunt based on the islands off the coast of Alaska to where you're, you're boat based and you're going up there and you're elk hunting. And once you get the elk down, the challenge is to get all, all the meat off before uh, a bear comes in and sort of claims the carcass, something like that. Just different locations inside North America, kind of highlighting hunts that not a lot of people know about. Um, I just recently got back off an odd hunt in West Texas, and everybody thinks, man, Texas flat, 
all that. Well, we were hunting the mountains of West Texas, and I can tell you it's, the mountains are the same as any of the sheep that I've got in Canada. So it's yeah. kind of highlighting those and, and how those animals were introduced and, and that they are free-ranging and that just everything about them. Very cool. I've been lucky to uh, hunt Audad in West Texas, and, you know, it's not easy. No, no, it's it's not what everybody expects once you get over there and you see how steep those mountains are, and, and it'll take you a couple hours to hike up one of those, and then all of a sudden you watch an Audad run up it in about 30 seconds. That was what amazed me as a, as a mobility-challenged individual. <laughs> I got lucky and was able to catch them coming out of a sunning area on an extremely cold day. People don't realize it, but the day I hunted them, it was only 10 degrees and out yep. in West Texas. And they were holed up in an area, and I was lucky to get out on the road and, and shoot one. Uh, but I watched the rest of them come out of that hole, and, man, they moved up that side of that mountain like you and I would walk across a flat sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, they're they're in a hurry. Once once they realize something's wrong, they're in a hurry to get out of there. <laughs> Fast and furious. Well, that's yep. really awesome. So it's a great item to watch. I know you partnered up a lot in some of the hunts with Tim Harold. Yes, correct. And he's been on the show under numerous uh, hunts to show. So it's really neat to watch you guys and see the different things you've done. You know, the rusted rooster. Now I haven't had a chance to watch dropped. Are those available? Uh, to buy like on a, a Blu-ray or how are you guys planning on distributing those next? They're, so we haven't decided how we're going to do that next. Right now, the new seasons air on the outdoor channel. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of uh, the guys over at the studio, Chris and Casey. So last year, Project Drop rated number one on the outdoor channel as the most viewed series. Wow. So that includes all the Duck Dynasty series that they're rearing over there, all the other originals that they did. Project Drop came out first, so. I mean, that's just a kind of a kudos to what those guys do as hosts, but also what our studio is capable of. Yeah, anybody that hasn't headed over to Rusted Rooster Media, uh, you know, the, the website, you can check out the work that they're doing, and it's absolutely top-notch. There's talking cinematic-type production that's coming out of that studio. Correct. Not we've, the, got, we've got a couple of big projects in the works over there that'll be rolling out over the next three to four months that are that are pretty special as well. Well, neat. Well, we we'll look forward. And will those also be on the Sportsman Channel, or are they going to be on uh, various items? Various. Uh, they'll be various items. Yep, various locations. Well, cool. Well, I really appreciate the time. What I wanted to do is, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, Mark, what's the best way to do that? Um, you can e- probably email the best with my with my crazy travel schedule and. Uh, being international a good portion of the year, my cell phone doesn't always work, but I can always log into my email, it seems like. So uh, simple, Mark, M-A-R-K, at trophyadventures.com is the best email to get me. Fantastic. And I'll have that linked in the notes of the show as well as I'll put out links to Goose Haven Outfitters, Salt River Outfitters, Whitaker Brothers, and, uh, of course, Worldwide Trophy Adventures, your Facebook page for uh, the Cabela's Instinct show. You know, everything that's lined up here, Mark didn't know this. For the listeners, Mark didn't know this until I told him uh, previous, right before we started this interview, I'm actually a customer of Tags. Uh, and Tags is going to be helping me try to draw a Gould's turkey in southeastern Arizona. Not an easy item to get to. And I'm trusting these guys in their experience to know it far better than I, where and how to put in for these uh, for these turkey tags. And I've dealt and talked with them before, great group of people, so I can't tell you enough how great it is to go out and contact them and you know enjoy. Let them help you take some of that, that angst of how the heck do I do this. Let them help you do it. Oh, that sounds good. And if you need help getting any of your other turkeys, you got to let Tim or I know. We, uh, between us, I, I think we know almost every turkey outfitter there is. So. <laughs> I will do that. I'm starting off yep. with the Rio this summer, or this uh, spring here in Texas at, in my home state, and then uh, going to figure out how to map out the rest of them. And Tim and I were talking. I know he's getting ready to take out, take off out of country. You're getting ready to go, but we'll... Uh, We'll look forward, and I'm going to be working with you guys to step by step how to get the Osceola, the Merriam, and all of them. So I, it's it's too easy not to use you guys. Yeah, that's how we try to make it. So that's perfect. Awesome. Well, Mark, I really appreciate your time. It was fantastic catching up with you. I always love talking with other Michiganders and see how they're doing, and you're just knocking it out of the park. So it's great to to see that and and to be able to share what you're doing with everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks, and you have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you. Good 
Come early spring, it's getting green. Fisher on the bed, and hear those turkeys gobble. It's ringing in my head. The winter rides bass boat, here comes another year. Yeah, we command the outdoors around here. Oh, we command the outdoors. Yeah, we command the outdoors. Come summertime, we're feeling fine, fishing on the lake. Flipping jigs in Carolina rigs From early morning till real late Bonfires on the creek bank Kick back a couple beers Yeah, we command the outdoors around here Yeah, we command the outdoors Yeah, we command the outdoors. Next year's does until you know winter's on the way. Brushing blinds and deer stands. The fever starts to creep. Fill our freezers full of ducks, lots of tender deer. Yeah, we command the outdoors around here. Yeah, we command the outdoors. Yeah, we command the outdoors. So grab your guns, shells, boys. Put on your camouflage Cause we command the outdoors around here We command the outdoors